Namaste and Happy New Year, as we are on the last day of uh, 2021, hoping for a great uh, 2022. Um, just close your eyes for a moment just to set the intention for uh, Jyotish. I chant a mantra to Ganeshji, and Ganesh is the deity for Jyotish. If you know this mantra, you're welcome to chant along. Om Vakratunda Mahakaya Surya Koti Samaprabha Nirvignam Kurume Deva Sarva Karyeshu Sarvada Om Shanti 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 So what I'm going to do today is called mundane astrology. Mundane astrology means the boring everyday what is going to happen in the whole world. It's much more interesting to know what's happening in your own life but this is mundane for the whole world. And I'm pulling two charts. One for this moment because this moment you all have a question. What is coming up in 2022? And so this is a divine moment that you have a question. And so I pull a chart for that to help you understand you as yogis, what may happen for your journey. Then I pull a chart for the exact moment of midnight here where I am, because I'm the Jyotishi, I'm the astrologer, it's my consciousness looking at the chart. And so what is happening for me at that New Year's moment? And then hopefully that makes sense for everybody around the world. And very specifically, because it's Vedic astrology, I'm going to zoom in on the moon. Where is the moon? What is the moon doing exactly at midnight, my time? And that location happens to be the same for all of us in the world. Wherever you are, where your midnight was, uh, is going to be in a, in a few hours for some of you, that moon location actually matters for all of us. So, um, oh, one more thing before I get into the chart. The zodiac has 12 constellations, right? We start with uh, Aries, and we go Taurus, Gemini, and so on and so forth. That's 12 zodiac signs everybody knows. But in Vedic astrology, we also have something called the nakshatras. And in India, everybody in India knows what is their nakshatra, their birth star. Because when you do any kind of puja, you should know your nakshatra so that you send the puja to the right location in the, in the cosmos. So nakshatras are a 27 division of the sky that is different to Western astrology. Western astrology doesn't have anything like that. And the nakshatras all have very specific symbolism. And that symbolism is connected to the rich mythology of the Vedic tradition. So if we know where a planet is in space, in its star location, let's say, like I said, oh, uh, Jupiter is uh, currently in Aquarius. So you say, okay, Jupiter is in the sign of Aquarius. If I look at Jupiter in the sky, behind it would be the stars of Aquarius. But very specifically, it's in the nakshatra of Danishta. Danishta is one of the 27 nakshatras. And the symbolism of Danishta is the drum. And the drum that is in Shiva's hand. So when Jupiter, the planet of wisdom and learning and teaching, is connected to this location of space that's connected to Shiva's drum, then you know there's a Shiva energy taking place with Jupiter. And Shiva, as we know, is the ultimate yogi. So we can already say that Jupiter being in Danishta at this very moment as we talk means that there is an energy of Shiva and the yogi energy and the energy of music is in the air, the rhythm of the universe of, of Shiva's drum. So this is how I make interpretations, okay? So I'm gonna share a screen. This screen will only make sense to those of you who've taken the course, but if you haven't, um, I'll try and walk you through in a very quick way. So this is, uh, every, Jyotiran, does this show up okay for everybody? Okay. So this is a chart for this very moment. Right now, here we are um, at this New Year's Eve event. And it's a prashna. Prashna means the question that we have. And already I can see that on my eastern horizon, if I looked out, it would be this diamond here, number nine. And number nine is connected to Sagittarius. So I can say Sagittarius is rising at the moment. It's a very spiritual, religious type of a sign. But what I'm interested in is the AS, the ascendant. The exact rising point on the horizon right now is in the nakshatra of Mula, Mula. And Mula is connected to the goddess Niriti. 
Nirti is the goddess of dissolution. The Hindus took Nirti and converted it into a more modern form that is known as Kali. So any of you that are Kali worshippers or understand the, the, the energy of Kali, the energy of Kali is in, imbibing this moment. So what does Kali do? She destroys things in order for new things to come out. Mula is also connected to the root, the, the root, the, the root of plants. And so you can say the energy for us right now is everything in our life has sort of been destroyed down to the roots. Everything's broken down to the roots in order for us to regrow in a different way. So you can say this year has been a year in a way of Kali's energy, destroying everything down to the roots in order for us to get to what we truly are. Who are we really to then grow up in this new way that will come for 2022 for all of us? The other thing I notice is that Saturn, very, very powerful planet of discipline. In fact, Saturn is a planet of sadhana. Discipline, your yogic practice, you get up in the morning, do your meditation, do your yoga practice, do your pranayama. Saturn is very connected to that. It is in a nakshatra known as Shravana. And Shravana symbol is the ear. And the ear symbol is connected to the, the concept of Shruti, listening, learning through listening. And if you know the yoga tradition originally was all orally taught. Jyotish also was orally taught. You just listened. Didn't have to write, didn't have to read, you just listened. So this energy right here, Saturn, and Shravana means there's a lot of discipline that have to take place next year for all of you specifically in listening. And this is in the second house of the chart at the moment, which is connected to income. So in order for you to have income, good income, good earnings next year, you will have to slow down and really start to listen. Very, very important. And work hard. So hard work, discipline, and listening and learning are all the things that would contribute to your income as a group here, because we're all, uh, this is the chart for our group at this moment. And Mercury is an Uttarashada. Mercury is a planet of wisdom and learning and teaching. And this Uttarashada nakshatra symbolism is the elephant's tusk. You know, if you look at Ganesh, he has one tusk that's broken. And he used that tusk to write the Bhagavad, to, to write teachings, basically. But very specifically, the Bhagavad Gita is connected to this nakshatra. So again, part of your learning this year will be to start studying a little bit deeper the energy of the Bhagavad Gita. And realize that you are a spiritual warrior just like arjuna had a moment of despondency what should i do where should i go should i fight this battle this is the question for you is to stand up and stand up for what you believe in and fight the battles you have to fight because it's your duty so this is just a quick uh, overview of what is relevant for our group then i will switch over to another chart here which is the New Year's chart. And this one was very interesting when I pulled this up. Uh, let me just check my notes and make sure I covered uh, everything. Yeah. So this is the chart for the New Year's Eve, January 1st, 2022, midnight at my location in Redondo Beach, California. But most of these planets will be in the same location wherever you are, even at midnight of your time, because they don't move that fast. The difference will be the ascendant will be different for everybody, depending where they are on Earth. But the first thing I noticed is that the ascendant, meaning the exact moment of New Year's for me, which, which I'm the Jyotishi looking at the chart now, is in a nakshatra called Hasta. And Hasta nakshatra is the one nakshatra that's connected to yogis. So already there's a yogic energy coming. So the first thing I saw is I thought, oh, this is 2022 looks to be the year of the yogis, the rising of the yogis. And Hasta is sometimes connected to the hand, and and is very connected to the yoga tradition so one thing next year is if you're a yogi if you're a yoga teacher this is the year where you'll start to become very very important for this world that was one energy i saw then i looked further and the moon the moon as you know it has phases right so there's a new moon then the moon gets brighter and brighter every day it starts to wax and then there's a full moon today very specifically this is um this is the Panchanga, the Indian calendar. There's a thing called a Titi. Titi means the moon phase. And this today, the coming up uh, for, for our midnight or our New Year's, it'll be Krishna Chatur Dashi. Chatur Dashi means the 14th day of the moon. 
14th day of the moon is ruled by Rudra. Rudra is a form of Shiva, is a very fierce form of Shiva, but it's especially Shiva the yogi. So the moon phase is in the Shiva the yogi location. The rising sign is Hasta, two indications that this is a yogic year. Then the moon itself is in the nakshatra of Jeshta. And Jeshta's symbol is a gold ring, the gold earring. Everybody knows the gold earring symbol in this group because the Nath yogis, if you see Vishwaketu and you see all the Nath yogi lineage, they sometimes we call them Kanpata, they, they wear an earring, a gold earring in their ear. This is Jeshta very, very specifically. Jeshta is the symbol of the occult. So for all of us, wherever you are in Europe, in North America, in Asia, the moon is in Jeshta during your midnight, during your New Year's. And so wherever the moon is at the moment of the new year, I believe is, is an indication of what's to come for this year. And the moon happens to be in Jeshta, Nakshatra, which is connected to the gold earring, which is what the Nath yogis wear. And you're all Nath yogis, you're students of Vishwaketu, he's a Nath yogi. So this means it will be a year of the occult. Occult means the, the sort of the secret sciences, yoga, Ayurveda, Jyotish, Vedanta, all of these things. So that's the second indication. Ascendant in Hasta gives you the um, yogic energy. Then the moon in Jeshta gives you this occult yogic energy of the Nath lineage. And the moon phase being the 14th day of the moon connected to Rudra is a Shiva energy who's also a yogi. So now there's f- almost four indications of a yogic year to come. Then the moon is with Ketu. This is a lunar node. There's a location where eclipses take place. So I won't get into all the symbology of the eclipses, but when the moon is with Ketu, Ketu is a very spiritual energy, extremely spiritual. It's the tail of the serpent. You could say Kundalini energy in some ways. And so when the moon is here, that again gives a very spiritual bent of of, uh, energy. And of course it's with Mars and Mars is the planet who is the warrior, the fierce warrior that fights. And so going back to Bhagavad Gita analogy, this is like Arjuna energy. And so this is the time of the fierce yogi warriors to rise up and help the world recorrect to a more spiritual balance. If you if you pay attention to the news in the last year and a half, two years, we've completely fallen off our spiritual path as a humanity. And so it's our job as yogis to bring that balance back, that spiritual balance back. And so I see this as a big theme this year. And so the good news is all of you are yogis. This is your time to now help and heal this world from this dark time that we've been in. And there's many other energies here, but Saturn and Jupiter are the two ones I want to look at. Saturn, as I said, is in Shravana and Jupiter is in Dhanishta in Aquarius. So what will happen for us is these planets, Dhanishta, Jupiter, is connected to Shiva's drum, as I said. And so that already becomes a spiritual time of rhythm. And so this year will have is a year of teaching and learning. Aquarius also is very connected to gatherings and conferences and groups of people. So you'll find that now people are going to start gathering. And I know there's some restrictions now. We're in a little bit of a a wave as far as uh, uh, COVID goes, but this will pass. And then there'll be gatherings as Jupiter and Danishta will be a time of gathering. And on April 14th, Jupiter will move out of Aquarius and move into Pisces. And Pisces is a very spiritual sign. And so when Jupiter moves into Pisces on April 14th, this is when all this energy I'm telling you will begin. That spiritual energy will begin after April 14th. And then furthermore, Saturn on April 29th, just two weeks later, so April is a big month, will move into its own sign of Aquarius. And so when Saturn moves into Aquarius, this is when there'll be a lot of spiritual gatherings. So I believe that this will be quite a time uh, in the spring for us. Now, Jupiter uh, will be in Pisces, very spiritual, lots of learning, lots of teaching, lots of yoga, teaching and learning. Saturn, meanwhile, will move into this Aquarius, but it'll move back into Capricorn. It, It has a retrograde motion. It'll move forward and then it'll move back. And when it moves back in July, there'll be a little bit more restriction. So I think this summer we'll see just a temporary restriction again, maybe some more rules. 
but then overall it'll move again. And so as yogis, this is your year. This is your year to do your practice. This is your year to go out and teach and share with the world and overall help with spiritual balance and spiritual healing. So that is my quick assessment of uh, the energies to come based on this very moment, uh, divine moment of gathering for New Year's Eve. So namaste. Thank you. Namaste. You're very welcome to Akhand Yoga YouTube channel. I'm very proud of you, your deepening yoga practice. Well-being is your birthright. I really like you to join free online platform. There is a beginner to advanced hundreds of yoga videos. Kundalini Yoga, Raj Yoga, Yoga Nidra, Pranayam, many, many videos are there. I'm really looking forward to practice with you there. Hari Om.